Hello, and welcome to the mycocosm tutorial. My name is Stephen Mondo, and I am a data scientist on the fungal and algal genomics team at the Joint Genome Institute. In a series of video tutorials, our team will be discussing the various omics capabilities and data available on our web platform, Mycocosm. In the first part, I will be presenting an overview of the JGI sequencing and annotation pipeline, followed by a description of the various tools we have available in Mycocosm for navigating the data. So let's get started. So Mycocosm is intentionally designed to facilitate comparative genomics. At the JGI, we perform genome sequencing, assembly, and annotation at scale to support our user community. My team specializes in genome annotation, which involves both gene modeling and functional annotation of those genes. For gene modeling, we first mask the genome to separate out transposable elements. We then align various sources of information, such as RNA-seq data and homologous proteins. After this, we employ a variety of different tools, including ab initio or de novo predictors, as well as homology and RNA-seq-based methods to predict genes. Once we have all of those genes, we functionally annotate them and use this information alongside details on gene structure to filter genes. Our aim is to identify the best model at each locus, which is then added to what we call the filtered model set. This filtered set is then used as a foundation for our gene catalog a flexible track that could be improved by users if necessary through manual curation. All of the data we generate are first pre-released for a short period of time to collaborators for assessment and improvement, then made publicly available for the entire research community through our web platform, Mycocosm. So as you can imagine, the potential to conduct comparative genomic studies is greatly improved by the incorporation of additional genomes. One major advantage of mycocosm is that it brings together a massive amount of data on fungal genomics. Much of these data were generated by us. However, we also actively import data sets published by the fungal community. In the past, these were imported as is, but since these come from many sources that take a variety of different approaches towards annotation, we are beginning to apply our pipeline's filtering capabilities to these external model sets to make them more comparable to the ones that we generate internally. With or without filtering, we always preserve all of the original external annotations in our portal. You will see soon how you can distinguish between these two different types of data in our portal using our navigation tools. So let's head over to Mycocosm to begin our exploration. So at Mycocosm, we have developed a variety of different ways to connect you to the data you are interested in exploring further. But first, let's zoom our browser in a little bit so we could see some more details. So before we get into these navigation tools, on this homepage, you will also see we have a sidebar which contains several important links. If you are interested in submitting a proposal, CSP calls and details can be seen by clicking this link here. We also have video tutorials available from the pull-down menu at the top of the page. Also available from the sidebar, we have a nominations page, which allows you to propose an organism for sequencing as part of the 1000 Fungal Genome Project. So this project has the goal of sequencing at least two representative genomes per known family of fungi. So if you have an organism from an underrepresented family that you want to sequence, you can nominate it here. The families are color coded on this page to indicate which lineages we need more representatives from. If approved, we will sequence, assemble, and annotate the genome free of charge, as well as assist you with comparative genomic analysis for publication if necessary. So if you are ever lost within the Mycocosm platform, you can always click on the JGI Mycocosm logo at the top left-hand side of the screen, which will bring you back to the homepage. So on the sidebar, you will also see that we also have announcements of upcoming conferences and events, um, as well as some of the most recently released fungal uh, genomes available within Mycocosm. So when it comes to navigating Mycocosm to uh, identify data, um, your eye, of course, is immediately drawn to this cartoon phylogeny in the center, which we call the genome navigator. However, we also have a very useful search function immediately, immediately above it, uh, which can help connect you to organisms you are interested in. We could type something in here to search directly, but let's click on the search Mycocosm button over here so we could see some more details. 
When you click on this search button, you are immediately and by default brought to a list of all genomes we have available in Mycocosm. You can then pare this list down using the search functionality at the top. You can, for example, request to only look at genomes that were generated at the JGI or these external uh, genomes I mentioned earlier. You can also uh, look and request genomes that are only publicly available or published only. And the distinction between these two different types can be important because we have different data use policies for each type, which can be read in greater detail on the download pages. The last pull down here uh, provides a list of group pages that you can then browse. Um, and if you select one of these, uh, it will zoom in on that group of interest. If you want even more details on that group, you can click the go to group button on the right. However, if you already know the organism or set of organisms you are interested in, the most useful feature of this page is the keyword search. Here, you can search directly for the species you're interested in. For example, let's look for Neurospora crassa. You can either press enter or click the search microcosm button to see your results. So here you see that we have four different strains of Neurospora crassa available within Mycocosm, two of which are published, shown in green with associated references, and two of which are publicly available but not yet published. We can also search this page using NCBI taxonomy. Say you want to identify some close relatives to Neurospora for comparative genomic analysis. We can search for all of the, gen the genomic data available for any organism within the Sordariaceae family of which Neurospora is a part of. And hit search mycocosm, which reveals that we now have 11 genomes available for analysis within this family. So this uh, taxonomy search functionality is based on the NCBI taxonomy. So if you are so inclined, you could even use their taxonomy IDs to filter our data. For example, let's zoom out one more step to the Cerderiales order, which is uh, corresponds to this NCBI taxonomy ID and then search mycocosm for that ID. You can now see that we see a, um, a list of 49 different Sordariales genomes available for further analysis. So another neat feature of this tool I wanted to highlight was that um, it has the ability to search by publication. So our published genomic data are linked to papers using PubMed IDs. So if you read an interesting paper that published some new JGI omics data, you can search for that ID in our system and retrieve all of the genomes that were included in that study. For example, let's search for this publication. Now you could see all of these genomes that were part of that paper that were released um, as part of that paper. Also, if you're fond of a particular author's work, you can search by their name um, and see all of the published genomes that they're associated with within Mycocosm. So um, the search functionality is a great tool if you have a priori knowledge of where to look. However, if you don't have an organism, a particular organism in mind, and you want to visually explore the available data, we have two options for you. The first of which is the genome navigator on our homepage. So let's go back to our homepage by clicking on the logo at the, the top left-hand side of the screen. So the navigator here um, is a cartoon representation showing um, a hierarchical taxonomic organization of the data we have um, in mycocosm across fungi. You could see that some of the nodes inside the tree are named and clickable, for example, Pizizomycotina. You will also see that each leaf of the tree is, uh, is similarly interactive. Clicking on any of these nodes will reveal all of the genomes that we have available at that taxonomic level and below. Um, note also that we have an option called tree available um, here, as well as other comparative tools for analysis across the group. So we'll be talking about this tree tool uh, very soon. So in addition to this uh, navigator, um, at the top left of this uh, image, we also have a um, mycocosm group page uh, description. So this pull down um, is color coded to provide a little more context on what is present within each of these groups. You could see that the vast majority of groups have no color. These are what we call phyla groups, meaning that uh, the group is determined based off of phylogeny. 
We also have what are called ecogroups, which are curated groups of organisms that share a common feature independent of phylogeny. For example, uh, brown rot fungi or ectomycorrhizal fungi. These ecogroups are highlighted in light blue. If you are interested in a particular ecogroup and do not see an organism you would expect to be there, please contact us and we will see about adding it. Also in light blue, we have other non-phylogenetic sets of organisms that are grouped based on certain criteria. For example, the Thousand Fungal Genome Project group, which contains all genomes that are part of this project. To explore a group, you can select it from the group pull-down here, or you can click on that node in the navigator and click on the top uh, link up here. For example, let's take a look at the largest group, the fungi. So when we access a group page, we land on that group's uh, information page over here. Uh, other sections of the tutorial will cover these other tabs that are available for group level analysis. But this does bring us to our third way that we can connect um, to the data within Mycocosm and navigate it, which is this interactive tree. So the tree tool provides a searchable and interactive phylogenetic tree for exploring the evolutionary relationships between members of the group. Each phylogroup is a maximum likelihood phylogeny based off orthologous proteins determined through MCL clustering. This tree is compri comprised of uh, nodes and leaves connected by branches. So each node is a bifurcation of a branch and the color of a node indicates the support for that bifurcation. For example, the node connecting the aspergillus and penicillium clades is green, meaning that it is fully supported. When mousing over branches of the tree, you will also see a green box appear, which delineates uh, the clade that will be um, accessed when you left click your mouse. So as you could see here, there could be many genomes within a tree. To find one organism that you are particularly interested in, you can um, then uh, zoom in on that lineage uh, by searching with our keyword search function. So to keep consistent with our example from before, let's look for a Neurospora crassa and then hit this filter button or press enter. And now you could see that um, the tree has collapsed a bunch of different uh, nodes and zoomed in particularly, particularly on the group that contains Neurospora. Um, so you could see also that we have grayed out all of the groups that do not fit the criteria that we just searched. So if you want to see a more normal view again, you can click this clear button to go back to more normal visibility. You can also customize your view of the tree by expanding and collapsing individual clades upon click. So for example, let's collapse the Sertariomyces clade by clicking back here. You can also expand it again by clicking the same node. So um, you can also notice that when you click on a node, it invokes this info button or info box at the top right-hand side of the screen. This information box will give you details on the support for that node, um, some details on NCBI taxonomy associated with the node, and how, much, how many lineages underneath that node um, agree with the NCBI's taxonomy identification. You can also pare down the list uh, further uh, to look at a zoomed in view of a particular group of interest by shift clicking on a particular node of interest. So let's shift click back here and see what happens. Now you can see that we've zoomed in on this one specific group which contains Neurospora and several outgroups. Um, you can then kind of expand this zoom back out by clicking on this up arrow which will move up one node uh, each time you click on the up arrow. So we have now learned uh, several different ways to connect and navigate the data available in Mycocosm. So let's continue our exploration of the omics data available in Mycocosm through diving into an individual genome portal. You can accomplish this using any of the uh, uh, approaches described today or by clicking directly on the leaf of interest um, on the interactive tree, say the model Ascomycete Neurospora crassa. As a model for understanding both fungi and general eukaryotic biology, Neurospora has been subjected to a variety of different omics-based analyses, 
Our next tutorial will show you the ways microcosm can be used to visualize all of these different types of data.